Hello everyone, this is TKibs14, and today I want to talk about some of the very basic fundamental principles of horn playing and some five general points that I'm going to hit in the video today that will break down kind of the general things that will make your playing much better. We're going to start out with body posture, we're going to move to breathing, we're going to set the embouchure, we're going to use connected air, and we're going to do some general tuning and warm up strategies that you can use depending on how your face is feeling. So without further ado, let's get started. So body posture is one of those things where us horn players really need to focus on or everything else, including our efficiency, will go downwards. So first of all, you want to think of your bones as stacking on top of one another so that everything is the most natural that it feels. So first of all, the support is built off of your feet when you're standing and everything else, your knees, just kind of relax and bend a little bit, just naturally. It shouldn't feel like your knees are locking or anything is tensing up here because any kind of tension in horn playing is detrimental to our playing. So again, make sure your knees are not locked and then just kind of make sure that everything else is built up after that. Because if you have any kind of leaning forward from here on up, it's going to cause air problems and it's going to limit your playing a lot. So make sure that everything else is kind of pulled up by a string and everything just feels very natural. So notice, this is what happens when I have the most tense posture and I try to play horn. Listen to the quality of sound and how my high notes don't speak very well. Now listen to the difference when I relax my body and everything sounds very natural and relaxed. Everything resonates a lot more and nothing sounds forced. When you're sitting down and playing horn, the same kind of concept applies. You just have everything relaxed down here and then you don't lean forward while you play here or else that'll also yield some pretty bad air results. For example, this is how I sound when I lean forward and everything up here is kind of tense. Versus. Once you have body posture down, the next thing to focus on is how to hold the horn without creating any additional tension. The hand can do several things to the horn color. First of all, it can change the tuning from muffled and flat to open and very sharp. And you want to find that nice mixture between the two. And there's another technique on the horn, which is called stopping notes. So, for example, this is what I would do when I stop a note. What you do is you relax your hand, you kind of put your thumb right around where this is, and you put it on the right side of the horn so that everything is kind of free and able to move and everything should be on the side so that you can easily do this. For example, this is what you'd use it for in real world examples. Next, let's talk about the hand that supports the weight of the horn. So with your left hand, it should really just kind of be a support for the entire horn. You can't support the horn off of just this. This is just kind of something that maneuvers around and your hand does stuff. So when you're holding the horn, you should be able to do this and wrap your hands around in a curve. Like you're holding a tennis ball, for example, and your finger should be curved so it doesn't limit your finger dexterity. It's really easy for us as horn players to do this or to grip on for dear life to your pinky, which you should not do. Another thing I've also learned about pinky tension is it's a very real thing. If you notice your pinky is wrapping around all the way to here, that is no bueno. If I put my pinky on top of the pinky ring and have the rest of my fingers here, it'll actually change my sound because this is what pinky tension sounds like. And this is what no pinky tension sounds like. Now that we've situated on holding the horn, let's talk about some breathing and general embouchure things to focus on. So this is going to kind of tie in two different topics into one, which is setting the embouchure and breathing properly. First comes the breathing and then comes the mouthpiece. If you can't breathe properly, you can't create a good sound on horn no matter what. Now, when you're breathing and playing at a certain dynamic, you only have to intake the amount of air that you use for your dynamic. For instance, if you have a pianissimo part, let's say in Ravel's Pavan excerpt, 
You want to use just a regular human breath. Or if you're playing, for example, Shostakovich Five Low Horn Exert, you want to use a very full breath. Now, if you can tell from those, I sing before I play, which is a very important thing for us as brass players to kind of hear what we're playing and that we can also use musical inflections. We can breathe, we can do a whole bunch of musical stuff just with singing. And the same kind of concept applies when you're playing horn. You want to play as if you were singing. So if you were singing something that was pianissimo versus something that was forte, you of course use different air intake for both of those. So when we're breathing, for example, on Shostakovich 5, we want to take a very full breath. Now, in order to take a full breath, you kind of fill from the bottom up. It's like you're pouring a glass of water. It, it starts from the bottom, fills up to the top, and everything expands outwards. So, take one hand, put it on the stomach, take another hand, use it on your back, and when you're taking a breath in, you should first feel this hand moving out, and then this hand should also move out. So, it should be a complete expansion of the air. Notice that nothing up here holds tension. Everything rises and falls back down naturally. That's how it should be in every instance of playing horn. Everything should be nice, relaxed, and natural, especially breathing. If your breathing is tense, you're going to create a tense sound. With that being said, let's get started on the mouthpiece. This is very important that you focus on the air first before the mouthpiece because if you don't have the right amount of air, you won't be able to set your embouchure properly and no sound will come out. Hold the mouthpiece with these two fingers and your thumb using your recessive hand so that way there's no pressure when you put the mouthpiece onto your lips. In order to create a good first sound on horn, first of all, you do not need to use harsh tongue. Ever. Ever. Your tongue should just interrupt the airstream very, very slightly. Your air on horn should always be connected no matter what you do. No matter what articulation you use, your air should be very efficient and always moving. So for example, if I wanted to attack a note and set my embouchure correctly, this is what I would do. Take a breath, set the embouchure, play. It's very simple. So first, take a breath, set the embouchure before you attack the note, and then attack the note and have the tongue ready and in one position and memorize that position on whatever partial you're on and then go for it and it'll be centered the moment that you hit it. That was just a middle C and that's fine. That's how you create a stable sound on the first note. So when you're going through each articulation, legato, accented, and staccato, you should always make sure that your airstream keeps on moving through those. For example, this is how legato notes should sound, and your tongue should only very slightly interrupt the airstream, remember. Dee, 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 dee. And this is how an accent should sound. Dee, 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 dee. And this is how staccato should sound. Dee, 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 dee. Notice, in between each articulation, I kind of have an eighth note subdivision going on my head. So for example, this is legato quarter notes at a uh, very slow tempo. Okay, you notice how many eighth notes are in that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great, legato air. That's what you should always be using when you play legato notes. When you're playing accent notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And when you're playing staccato notes, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's how long your articulation should be for each articulation. For example, legato, here goes accents. Staccato. Notice that my air keeps on moving and doesn't go ah, 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 because that's really going to limit my playing when I'm doing fast, articulated staccato stuff. 
Finally, once we've got all the mouthpiece stuff down, the horn is just an extension of the mouthpiece, so if you can't do something right on the mouthpiece, you probably won't be able to do it on horn, but there is a greater chance of being able to do it on the horn because of the extended piping that helps the air flow more. Now, before we play horn, we need to tune the instrument all the time. There's lots of apps available now on the App Store and on the Google Play Store that you can use for tuning your instrument. For example, I like to use Tonal Energy Tuner, which costs a little bit of money, but it's definitely worth the investment in the long term. So what I typically do when I tune the instrument is I put on a C drone, and I tune with that. When you're playing some of these notes, you really want to sink in to the tuner sound, and if you're if you're attacking the notes too sharp, it'll show on the tuner. So make sure that your tongue positioning is set and ready to go. Some other things that I do when I'm tuning my instrument is I hold out a drone and I play some scales. I would choose a warm-up routine that doesn't tire your face at the beginning of the day and something that you think would be the most efficient for you in your playing sessions. I typically like to only use about 10 minutes of my time for long tones because if I go any longer than that, my face will be very tired. So I start the day with some Vern Reynolds flexibility arcs. This is a great exercise that kind of helps with understanding how your air should always be moving throughout the partial series and that you really shouldn't be using too much air for this. You should just be concentrating on the speed of your air and the efficiency of air that you use, and you want to have enough support behind the notes so you're not locking on to different partials. I've set my metronome to 80 beats per minute, and I'm going to demonstrate to you kind of how this should go. Make sure when you're playing higher partials that you don't tense up anything on your face and that you're really focusing on your air. And while you're getting up to those higher notes, feel your air kind of compressing more and make sure that nothing in your face tenses up too much when you're playing higher notes. So to review, just make sure you go through a mental checklist. Am I playing with a relaxed sound? Am I using my air properly? Is something tensing up? If that's the case, how can I fix that tension and how can I relax? I hope you found all of this helpful. I'm gonna do a video sometime in the future describing more of a practice routine that I would follow. So I hope you guys like this. Give me a comment and some feedback below and tell me if any of this works and I'll see you in the next video.